In a couple of previous videos, I discussed uh, two popular time series models, the autoregressive or AR model and the moving average or MA model. And these models are very popular in economics and finance where we have a lot of time series data like, uh, you know, stock prices or, um, you know, consumer price index, that sort of thing. So the natural extension is the autoregressive moving average or ARMA or ARMA model. It's a combination of the AR and MA models. And just to recap, the AR1 model is given by, you have Y in time period T, and it's going to be a function of some constant term here, beta zero, plus some coefficient times um, Y lagged one period. Okay, and there's going to be an error term because we're not going to, um, you know, estimate this perfectly. In the moving average model, you're not using past values of the dependent variable. You're using the past error term to adjust it. So we call it a moving average model because you have this mean or average here, and you adjust it based on what the previous error was. So here we're going to have this coefficient we'd estimate, phi1, times the error from the last period. And of course, we have an error term in the current period. So the ARMA11 model is given as beta0 plus beta1 yt minus 1. So that looks just like we had the um, AR model, the AR1 model plus we're going to add in this phi1 times epsilon t minus 1, so this error as well, what well, lagged one period. So here the value of yt depends on a lagged value of y and the error from the previous period. And you can have a much more general model, which we'll call arm of pq, where p is the number of lags on the um, autoregressive part, and Q is the number of lags on the moving average part. So here we would have, again, that same constant plus beta 1 times yt minus 1, and then you'd have plus beta 2 times yt minus 2, all the way out to P lags, beta P times yt minus P. And then you would have the phi 1 times the error in the previous period plus phi 2 times the error two periods lagged all the way out to phi q times the error lagged q periods. And again, we get an error term at the end. The big question we have here is, are we going to specify this model, right? Are we just going to throw in a bunch of lags? Um, how do we choose what is the appropriate model? Well, we can use the autocorrelation function and the partial autocorrelation function to do this. Now there, there are some videos that go into some great detail on how to do this, um, but here I just want to introduce the basic idea. So we're interested in the correlation between yt and yt minus 2, and we should note that there are essentially two effects here. So there's a direct effect between yt and yt minus 2, so what happened two periods ago impacts what happens today directly. And then there's an indirect effect where what happened two periods ago affects what happened one period ago, which also affects what happens today. So the autocorrelation of function accounts for both of these effects. The partial autocorrelation function only accounts for the direct effect. So the direct effect between yt minus 2 and yt. So to find the autocorrelation function, we can just compute the Pearson correlation coefficient between yt and yt minus 2. To find the partial autocorrelation function between yt and yt minus 2, we run an autoregression. So here we're going to have yt and it's going to be equal to gamma 2, 1. And I'm going to use the notation 2, 1, 2 means 
that we're looking for the uh, autocorrelation for the second lag. And this is the first coefficient, so it's 2, 1. And then gamma 2, 2, again, we're looking for on the second lag, and this is the second lag. What's the, what's the partial autocorrelation function? It's just the gamma 2, 2. It turns out that this gamma 2, 1 accounts for the relationship between yt and yt minus 1. So this just gives us, this coefficient here just gives us the direct effect. And that's our partial autocorrelation function. If we wanted to do it for p lags, then we would have to have you know, um, gamma P1 times YT minus 1, gamma P2 times YT minus 2, all the way out to gamma um, PP times Y minus TP. So again, all of these coefficients are going to account for the, you know, indirect effects YT minus 1 and YT, YT minus 2 and YT, etc. So this coefficient gamma p comma p is going to be the partial autocorrelation function for the p period lag. So what you can do is you can plot these. Now you don't have to estimate these. Okay? Your standard econometric software um, such as eViews or Gretel or any package you would use would do these computations for you and they would plot these and show you, you know, some error bands. And if the partial autocorrelation function lies outside the error band, then it's significantly different from zero. And if it does not cross that, if it's inside the error bands, then we say it's not statistically different from zero. So in this case, we have two that are outside the error bands. So we're going to use a lag of two periods. Likewise, for the moving average part, we use the autocorrelation function. So in this example, we happen to have one that's significantly different from zero. So we're going to choose Q equals one. So the final model specification is going to be YT equals beta zero plus beta one times yt minus 1 plus beta 2 times yt minus 2 plus gamma 1 times epsilon t minus 1 plus the error term um, in time period t. So we have two autoregressive terms and one moving average term. And again, we could have it, it could have wound up being specified as 2, 2 or 1, 2. In this case, it happens to be an ARMA 2, 1 model.